In this next clip, Paul Scholes discusses why he quit England, and the team also discuss the problems surrounding England's so-called golden generation midfield, and why they couldn't get the best out of Paul Scholes. And afterwards, I will be outlining the two simple solutions England could have employed to get the best out of Paul Scholes and that amazing midfield. But be warned, you will hate what needed to be done. Why can England not keep the ball in a tournament? Because we, we, we asked this question on the very first day that we got to Germany. I think that it, the reason England get knocked out of tournaments quite often is because just other teams keep the ball better than us and they wear us down. That's happened in our generation yeah. and it's happening in the sun with, with Spain in the final. You obviously were pushed out to the left when you were deemed as being one of the sort of best playmaking midfield players. What would you do with the current England midfield and how would you get older position? Where, where is the problem? Do you think um, Gomez is the, is the answer? Gomez, oh, Angel Gomez. It's um, a tough question, guys. I, I think you like the way like, he plays, though. Paul. Yeah, I, I like I him. Like yeah, he's, it was pretty, it was safe, wasn't it? But it's technically technically good. He, he ticks the game over. Of course, he does. Um, major tournament. It, it's hard, isn't it? Yeah. I think this is a team. It is a possession team. I don't think we were so much of a possession team. we really we had brilliant forward players and mm. and wide players at the time. I wasn't really a playmaker then. Do you know what I mean? You talk about being a playmaker. I wasn't then. I was more of a, a forward, trying to score goals and make goals all the time. So we didn't really. I have think that you balance. were. I think you were 28 then, 29. You were in that. You 29 were, when I finished. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm saying I think at 20, 2004 you're 29, and you yeah. were at that point starting to control games in midfield. I don't I, think I was at that point. I think it, it came around that point when I finished, and I was, I was probably given the time at club level to transition into that. More of a sitting player, you don't. But when you were playing with England, were you, were your managers obsessed with possession back then? Were you, Sven no. wasn't. No, no, no. Glenn, Oddle, Glenn Oddle was. Glenn Oddle was right. And I, I think we played all right under Glenn. Yeah, possession wise. You, I think you we thought Glenn was the right type of football, didn't you? you yeah, thought I, I enjoyed it with Glenn. Yeah, yeah. But you, you just going back to that in terms of being pushed to the left, and obviously it's something that's been talked about now for for many a year. But sorry, Gary, can I just make? But when you're saying push to the left. You're not left winger, are you? You're not talking about someone. Could no, you? I, 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 right. I did it loads of times. Yeah, at United. That's I, what I'm saying. I, I, I loved yeah. it. You know, I, I don't know what it was. It was just, it was totally different because maybe we had the players in the middle of the pitch at United who could control the game, and that helps you when you start left hand side. And you can go. Yeah, yeah you, you can do what you want basically. Yeah. With England, I, I never felt there was that kind control. of control in midfield where you could relax a little bit. How many games did you actually play on the left? Don't was know. it a lot? Was know. it just that tournament in 2004? No, or was it a bit before I don't that? Know. I, I don't know, Jim. I couldn't tell you. Was that tournament? It, it, it wasn't after, loads. Was it after the tournament? You just said, right, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Yeah, with it was after. It was the day after. The Portugal. Was it the Portugal tournament? Yeah, I remember you speaking yeah. to me in the morning just before Sven was doing his meeting and saying, that's it, I'm done. Yeah. And I was like, Look, what I, do you I, mean? went see, I went to see Sven, yeah. We played. I'd, I'd felt. Uh, I played badly, really, for, for quite some time. I hadn't. Was it because of the position you felt you were in? No, it was, it was absolutely nothing to do with the position. I just. Because, I, like, like I said, I, it, it didn't matter what position you played, it's, it still doesn't mean you have to give the ball away or, of course. do you know what I mean, or mm. be able to receive the ball. I, I still felt I, I, I could do all that, but it, I was just, I was so bad, my, my form was so bad. I, I, I think the first 18 games or something, I scored nine goals for England and then the next 40 games, I'd scored four goals or something. So it was just, it was just so bad and I felt, what was that Horrible. the environment of all scores? Was it just the whole, sometimes the package you're going away with international football, no? You didn't like going away that much, did you? No, I, I never did, no. Um, like, whatever, so you've got to be happy in the environment to get the best yeah, out of yeah. players, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I saw Kevin De Bruyne this morning said that he wants to retire, I think, or something yeah, like yeah. that. And I, it took me back, actually, to there's a point where it come, I think it came with you, didn't it, where you just thought, that's it, you know, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I, I wasn't playing well. And when you're not playing well, you, you ate it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, why yeah. were you not playing well? Because you were obviously playing well for your club. I don't know. But what's the reason? You, know, you, must, I, I, you must have an idea. I don't know. I don't know the reason. You won't say you... If I knew the reason, I'd sort it out and play well. 
No, my point is though, was it a case of obviously you'll always look at yourself and you'll take responsibility, yeah. but then was there a case of we were very much a rigid 4-4-2. You remember when Sven used to do his team talks, we were a 4-4-2. Yeah. He would literally bring the two blocks back, he'd bring the four in. Yeah. He said, this is a shape that we're going to... He would, and it would literally be your two full-backs... It, it yeah, but, but did you have an issue with that, I'm yeah. saying? No, my point is we played 4-4-2 at United, so it wasn't something that was actually foreign to us. Right. But my point is that with England, it felt very rigid and different, whereas with United, it felt like we could... Things it did. That's why I go back to the didn't environment. Suit the yeah. players we had, did it really? Right. It didn't suit the players we had. Frank no. Stephen. None of them are really that kind of controlling yeah. midfield. I, I think it's interesting what you said, Scott. I, mean, I always think this because you always obviously bring Scholesy up when you're doing the TV and in the uh, in the summer. About we've never really produced that player. You played with England with Steve before Frank came along. It was you and Steve. I always felt that you were more. Maybe I've got, I don't, I'm not quite sure, but you were more the attacker one, and Steve, he was seen as like the... Under the Kevin he was. One. Under Kevin he yeah, was. Yeah, but even Sven, it was like yeah, Frank yeah. came a bit bit later, and yeah. I always felt you were... So I don't think you ever played that role for England where you... No, that you did for United when Carrick... Said, that's what I said before. I, I, yeah. was, it was never, I was never allowed time. And you mm. don't get it in social level. You think of managers changing all the time, players all the time. Mm. I was allowed time to do that with United because I was, I was never an athlete, was I? It was the last thing I was an athlete, so I couldn't keep doing that. I couldn't keep going forward all the time at some point. I had to realise that I had to change my game to try and be mm. a controlling midfield, but that didn't happen until I was like 29, 30. I think I'm realising you needed me near you, didn't you? I, I did, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the bottom line. Yeah. Yeah. I, needed I, 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 yeah. I needed legs, that's to be right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you needed an athlete. Yeah. Yeah. When you look at England team. had a fantastic set of players under the late great Sven Goran Eriksson. He had world beaters like David Beckham, Rio Ferdinand, Steven Gerrard and Paul Scholes, amongst others. But unfortunately, the squad was unable to move past the quarter-final stage in three major international tournaments. The main issue being that the team was unable to make the most out of the unbelievable world-beating midfield talent at its disposal. Now, Paul Scholes mentions in the clip that he didn't like going away with England and that his form wasn't great, which were the two contributing factors to him finishing with England. But it's an absolute guarantee. If he was enjoying his football and was being utilised properly, he would have stayed on. Now at its peak, the midfield options for England at the time consisted of David Beckham, Paul Scholes, Stephen Gerrard, Frank Lampard, Joe Cole, Owen Hargreaves and Michael Carrick. All world-class players. Now, Sven always stuck with a 4-4-2 formation with Beckham on the right, Lampard and Gerrard in the middle and either Scholes or Joe Cole on the left. And despite having the best midfield in world football for club or country at the time, England were just unable to dominate midfield. Now looking back from today's more tactically astute game, the problem is very clear. Sven's England midfield lacked balance and numbers in the middle of the park. Effectively, Eriksson played four attacking midfielders in midfield, all players who liked to get forward and whose instinct was to score or assist goals. And at the elite level, against well-drilled, well-organised teams like Portugal, Brazil or France, England struggled because they needed a midfield tactic that was a little more sophisticated than shoehorning four superstar names into midfield. Now, the solution was very straightforward, but it did require two big decisions from the manager. The first big decision was one of the superstar names needed dropped. And the second, a new formation was needed. Now, as mentioned in the clip, England struggled with possession and were continually outnumbered in the middle of the park. Now, a diamond formation would have been ideal for England at the time with the players that they had available. But there was always this obsession with the 4-4-2. But England never had any natural left wingers in this generation that could have balanced out that formation. But they did have an abundance of central midfielders so if Sven had just adapted slightly, this England team could have dominated the midfield. Now having a diamond in midfield would have utilised most of those big names, plus it would have packed the midfield and would have given England the best opportunity to dominate possession. They would have then been able to utilise the full backs in Ashley Cole and Gary Neville too, so they wouldn't have lost any wing play by sacrificing the wingers because Neville and Cole were excellent going forward and could whip in across no problem and they were fit enough to track back. Then comes the second big issue and that is who do you drop? Now the most frequent debate was to drop either Lampard or Gerrard because the idea was they couldn't play together, they're too similar. 
But that's not true. If you get the system right, then they could have dominated together. But there was a third person that should have been considered for the job, and that was the captain himself, David Beckham. Now, one of those players needed to go because that team was in desperate need of a defensive midfielder to anchor the midfield. Someone who could have destroyed any counter-attacks. Someone who could have protected the back four. Only two midfielders were undroppable at that time and one was Paul Scholes and the other is the player who should have been our primary defensive midfielder, Owen Hargreaves. Now, Owen Hargreaves was one of the best defensive midfielders in world football at the time who won the Champions League with Bayern Munich and who was also their club captain too. And Scholes would have been perfect in one of the two central midfield positions with his passing and ability to hold the ball and control games. That leaves the number 10 position and the other central midfield role. The United fan in me says Beckham, the captain, should have played alongside Scholes, but my head unfortunately says he should have been dropped if this new diamond formation was to be utilised, that is, because Beckham always played his best football as a right-sided midfielder. And if we're going with the diamond, then he needs to be sacrificed for Lampard, who was the better central midfielder. That leaves Steven Gerrard with free reign at number 10. So, the team should have looked a little bit like this, circa 2006, say. Robinson in goal, Back four of Gary Neville, John Terry, Rio Ferdinand and Ashley Cole. Owen Hargreaves patrolling the back four. Lampard and Scholes in the middle, with Gerrard supporting the two forwards in Wayne Rooney and Michael Owen. That is a much more balanced, well thought out, astute side than the one we got. And that is the brutal, cold, hard truth. So... For Ericsson to make the most of that wonderful squad and to keep Paul Scholes from retiring so he could make the most out of arguably the best central midfielder of his generation, he needed a diamond formation and he needed to drop Bex. Those were the two big decisions Sven needed to make. But what do you guys think? What else could Sven have done to make the most out of the golden generation? As always, all thoughts are welcome. In the comments, please. In the comments.